This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Uh, speaking of mystery, the, uh, the book helps us prepare for Elul and the Yomim Narayim, the mystery and the majesty, the grandeur and nobility of the days of awe and joy by Rabbi Daniel Gladstein. Rabbi Gladstein is Marada Astrof, Kehilas Ahavas Yisrael, and Cedarhurst, one of the Jewish world's most popular speakers and respected Magide Shiurim. His shiurim have garnered literally millions of views and downloads, and now he shares with us the many opportunities available to us in the season of majesty, the days between Rosh Chodesh Elul and Shemini Atzeres. Rabbi Gladstein's writing is incisive, stimulating and original, bringing together a vast array of sources, many of them rare and almost unknown, and helping us make the most of this vital time. I will also mention, courtesy of our friends at Artscroll, that if you utilize the promo code RADIO, you get a 15% discount on the mystery and the majesty. This is the book right there. And you get free shipping. Simply go to artscroll.com, use the promo code Radio, Rabbi Daniel Gladstein, welcome to JM in the AM. Good morning, Rabbi Nachman. How are you? A pleasure to have you here. Why did you write the book? Uh, I've had the privilege over approximately the last 10 years to give shiurim. I started out giving shiurim in Kugarn Hills community even before I became a Rav. And slowly the shiurim began being videoed, uh, mm-hmm. mostly on TorahAnytime.com. And I've had Baruch Hashem, many viewers and many of the viewers had, over the years, presented to me their versions of the shiurim in written form. And people have been asking me, you know, you've got you to gotta print it. You've got to put it into print. And uh, until finally, uh, somebody suggested I submit it to Artscroll. And I had a connection there. I had a friend, uh, Yossi Malone, who is uh, very involved with Artscroll. And he, he prodded the process along. And uh, they enjoyed the first piece, and about a year later, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, and it takes that long to put it all together, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, interesting title, by the way, The Mystery and the Majesty. Are, I, I know that there's a lot of majesty this time of year. Is yeah. there a lot of mystery this time of year? Yeah, there is, there is. There are many dimensions of the Yom Tovim that many people are not familiar with. And sometimes they, ha- they have certain clues about the Yom Tov, and they don't quite know what to do with it. And this book, uh, with Hashem's help, will hopefully open up various uh, treasures that are, are available to us if we probe a little bit deeper. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that because you have thousands of these types of little tidbits throughout the entire book. And it would be impossible to go through the entire thing. So what I did was I prepared a list oh, thank you. as I went through the book of different things I wanted to emphasize to give people an example of the types of things, the types of things you discuss and to give people a taste of how this will enhance their Yom Tov season. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do some of that uh, right now. Rabbi Daniel Gladstein is with us. The book is called The uh, Mystery and the Majesty, brand new from Art Scroll. You mentioned the Chavetz Chaim's attitude toward Shuva, how he compares it to an elevator. What does that mean? So when the elevator came out, the Chavetz Chaim was very excited about that. The Chavetz Chaim saw in the elevator a paradigm or an allegory toward Shuva. Many people think that Shuva is an impossible task. And the Chavetz Chaim explained, no. Just press the button, put your best foot forward, and once you take that small step, God will give you the heavenly assistance to carry you all the way up. If you actually press the button, <laughs> God will help you speed up the process. That's correct. You yeah. know what that reminded me of, by the way? Someone said to me the other day, why is the bracha hanosein layaif koach instead of hanosein koach? You should bless God for giving strength to people. Why are you giving the tired person the strength? And it was explained to me that the reason that the, the bracha is like that is because once you've given it your all and you've showed Hashem that you are exhausted from you know, doing what you're supposed to be doing all day long, then he'll go ahead and make sure to give you the cough. Very okay. similar yes. uh, to that thought. Um, is, is Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and <laughs> we always joke that this may be different uh, whether you ask someone from the Ashkenazic or Sparta community, is it a holiday based on love or based on fear? As in all dimensions of Avodah Hashem, there has to be a duality to it. So we have this expression, Gilu Barada, to rejoice in trembling, where we recognize that God is our king, and as our king, he's the most powerful entity in the world, and we tremble in his presence, but recognizing that Hashem is our king makes all other anxieties and fears dissipate because we know that not only is he our king, but he's our, he's our father. And this is a point that I emphasize a lot in the Sefer. There is a concept that the mechanism of tshuva, understanding the process of tshuva, is that that since Hashem is our Father, 
the Talmud teaches us, the Gemara says, Av shemachal al kavoidoi kavoidoi machal. Mm-hmm. A father has the right to overlook his insult, so to speak. So as our loving king, our loving father, he's able to forgive our sins. So it's only through the love that the process of tshuva is really activated. Very nice. I like that. You, you emphasize the usage of the word hayom. Yes. During uh, the uh, high holiday services, yes. what is significant about the word Hayom? So actually, this is one of my favorite subjects. Oh, good. <laughs> that the word Hayom is utilized specifically in designation of Rosh Hashanah. Just a few quick examples. The beginning of Sefer Eov, I believe, Parak Aleph, Pasuk Vav, where it says, Vayihi Hayom, and Rashi says, Rosh Hashanah. We say Hayom Haras Olam, right. Hayom Ta'amsenu. Right. There are so many different Perushim on this. I didn't even put all of them into the book, but the, the most compelling one, I think, that did go into the book is, is the fact that most of us, most dedicated Jews, we know what to do. It's not a matter of knowing what to do, but we like to procrastinate. We push it off. We say tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. You know, we hear about Daf Yomi, Amad Yomi, Daf HaShavua, Mishnah Bura Yomi, Chafetz Chaim Yomi. We have all these programs. The only thing is, Yitzhahara tells us they're great. Start after Yom Kippur, right. start after Hanukkah, start after <laughs> tax <laughs> season, <laughs> after Rabbi Shaila's yard site, after who knows what, right? But the job of, of tshuva is hayom. We have to do it now. It's not a matter of what, it's a matter of when. Right, and this is the day to do it. This is the no, day to no do it. No better day to do it. Uh, also, I thought that the, when I was reading what you had said about hayom, I thought there was also something significant. Maybe you said this in Kiva Yom Azeh, meaning in Yom Kippur's yeah, book of Kiva yeah. Yom Azeh, which oh. you wrote is very rare that we use the, the, the word oh. Bayom with a patach underneath it right. as opposed to a, uh, what do we call that? A, with a shva, <laughs> right, right. With a shva, right. With a shva underneath it. And there are very few examples of that. But the reason it was significant is because, I, and I think this was your message in that, uh, in that regard, was that people have to realize that, and you know what it reminded me of? There was an old radio announcer who used to say, yesterday's a canceled check, tomorrow's a promissory note, today's all we got. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it reminded me of that, that, that the, the significance of Bayom is that today is all we have. We can't, we can't serve God in the capacity of yesterday. We can't serve in the capacity of tomorrow. Today is it, and this is the time to do it, and this is the way to do it by being focused on this specific day. That yeah. does apply to yes, that plus, right? Yes, yes, and I'm glad to see... That you really read this book very carefully. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it was worthwhile to come here just to see <laughs> that you. somebody actually. Not only it, that, by the way, I'm highly recommending it. How oh, do you like you. that? That's Are you even better. Yeah, Rabbi thank Gladstein's you. here. The book is called The Mystery and the Majesty. It will enhance your Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and Sukkot. We are on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash Nahum Siegel Network. You have an interesting insight. I never even thought of this. I must have read this Pusik a million times, and at my age, it's almost believable <laughs> because of the number of times we've read the Parsha. Yishmael went with Yitzhak and Avraham to the Akedah. Yeah. Why is Yishmael there? And it's a Beferish and Pasuk. Yeah, so, so the, uh, you know, you're really hitting on uh, a lot of the main uh, parts of this book and some of my favorite parts it because this was actually the first essay that I submitted to Art School. And wow. This is really what won them it's over. It's a good one. <laughs> this is really a good one. Where Yishmael had been cast away decades earlier. Right. Sarah but, did not like him or having him so around. So here, here's like one of the mysteries of, of that the book uncovers is that in 30-so years, God orchestrated that the night before God spoke to Avraham and said, take your kid, Yishmael returned. So Avraham says, you know what? Why would Hashkacha have it that Yishmael just returned last night? Maybe Hashem refers to Yishmael. And Hashem says, no, it's Yitzchak. And the point being... And he I says sp- his name in the Pasuk. Right. He yeah. says, es, uh, bin bin chaz 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 hafta, es Yitzchak. Yitzchak. And, the, and Hashem says, you know why I brought Yishmael back? Because I didn't want you to just take Yitzhak because he's the only kid in the house. Uh, I wanted you to have a choice and reject Yishmael. Wow. So the, the Akeid, if I may, sure. is, is the um, demonstration of the rejection of Yishmael and the selection of Yitzchak. So Avram brings him and Hashem says, leave him bef- behind with the Chamar. Interestingly, at the end of the Akeid, the Torah uses an expression that also is somewhat rare. Then Hashem says, now that you did this mitzvah, you will overcome Oyevav. Not Soyna of. Soyna of refers to Esav. Right, those Oyevav, who hate you. Oyevav is, uh, Rabbi Machai says, those who have such enmity toward you right. that you scream out, Oyevav, and that's re- referring to Yishma. This right. is another clue that this refers to the ascendancy over Yishma. Very good. Um, all right, I, I know we're very, very pressed for time, but there's so many things I want to ask you about. 
Um, right? This is already in your Sukkot section. Yeah. Where yeah. you literally um, uh, feel or write about how when one builds a Sukkah, they're not only building a, what we call Mikdash Ma'at or a, a, a hut to, to help us serve God, but they're literally fulfilling the phrase of that as we build this, we are rejoicing in the holiday and we're rejoicing within ourselves. Yes, yes. This, uh, one, one of the important essays on sukkahs is the concept that the, the sukkah is a microcosm of the actual Beis HaMikdash. Right. And uh, that's why, if I may, the, by all the other Chagim, the Torah says that the function of going up to Yerushalayim is that is a place that God's uh, Shechina dwells. That's omitted by sukkahs. And the reason is because on Sukkot we don't need the temple to be the place of the Hashra Hashchina. It is the Sukkah itself. We have our own so that's sukkah. that's an uh, important observation. Uh, a lot of wonderful things. A lot of wonderful things. Um, it, the the I, I love the section on Eretz Yisrael. In fact, I had I had left it open to this uh. page thinking I'd get to it, but it seems we're very pressed for time. Unfortunately, it's called the Mystery and the Majesty. El, yeah, oh, one other thing I must ask you about. I never thought of our... Blo- do the Sephardi community blow shofar during the month of Elul or not? Because it seems like you're writing that the blowing of the shofar in Elul is, is our substitute for sleepers. Yes, yes. I haven't uh, dominated in a in Right, a so I don't know what they shul. do, but is that what it is? Is that what the shofar is doing so, for us? So, it's uh, replacing sleepers? Yeah, that's uh, also important And a shofar has the capability of doing that. Yes, yes. yeah. That's uh, also, yeah. Of waking us up to the point as, as if we spent the morning saying sleepers. Yes, yes. That's pretty remarkable. <laughs> now, we say, now we understand the importance of staying in shul to hear shofar. That's right. During the month of Elul. But to hear your voice this morning also, that serves <laughs> no, as a... As <laughs> well, if that's the case, I, source of, uh, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> you do have a section here, the borders of Eretz Yisrael and Com- in your sukkah, the Abarbanel's revolutionary approach to sukkahs, those who love Israel, and I would hope that's everybody who's tuned in, they will get special uh, hana, special pleasure from that section. Thank you. Rabbi Gladstein, Mazel Tov on the book. Thank you so much. Art Scroll's done everybody out there a big favor. If you use the promo code radio, you can get this book at 15% off, plus uh, free shipping in the USA. It's called The Mystery and the Majesty, Elul, Yamam Narayim, and Sukkot, the grandeur and nobility of the days of awe and joy. Check it out. You will enjoy this. It will enhance your holiday season. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. A real pleasure. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.